Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira, and in this video I'm going to go through just a few of the highlights of the Construct 3 release 397. Let's dive in. Um, first up, I'm going to show some new features around how templates and hierarchies work together. So here, there's a um, in this project, there's a simple uh, skeleton hierarchy made up of lots of different objects. And here, just to demonstrate the future, I've got a very simple version which is just the head and the body part. And now you can see this has been set to be a template called skeleton. And on the right here is a, a replica of that template called um, skeleton as well. So uh, as you may be aware, the templates feature allows for um, replicas to inherit the, pro the properties of the template. Uh, now this has been extended to cover hierarchies as well. So you can see that the head is, is part of the hierarchy and um, if I uh, move it and then click uh, modify, it will then repeat those changes to the hierarchy to all the replicas of the template. So this helps make it easy to update um, the, the shape of a hierarchy um, throughout the entire project for all replicas of a template. It goes further. Um, it also extends to changing the structure of the hierarchy itself. So for example, if I wanted to add a new part to the hierarchy, um, so I'm just taking the pelvis sprite there and adding that to the body part, you can see it automatically propagates the change to the hierarchy through all the templates as well. So you can see it's now this replica has now added the same uh, child object to match the template. There's settings to control this, so you can uh, disable that if you'd rather not have it. Uh, or ignore it for certain uh, replicas uh, and then you can use these options to manually update um, uh, any changes as well. So you can have it automatically update or you can manually update uh, and you can customize it to suit your project. So hopefully that's a really helpful change to how you can manage hierarchies and templates in a larger project. That's all I'm going to show about that for now. I'm going to move on. Um, next up uh, we have a good improvement for autocomplete. Uh, in the parameters dialog for most places where you use tags. So the tags are used a lot in Construct, for example, to identify uh, storage keys or AJAX requests or all sorts of things. Here I'm using the timer behavior as a good example. Uh, and you can see that this action starts a timer using a tag with the string my timer to identify that timer. And now the improvement that we've made is that it now can autocomplete these tags. So if I add a timer condition on timer and then when I type the opening uh, quote of the string you can see it's now autocomplete suggesting uh, the tag that I've already used. Um, so this should make it a lot easier and quicker to use tags. Uh, again it's an, a nice thing for larger projects where you use lots of tags and you uh, might not remember exactly how you spelt a tag that you used before so that should make it much easier. And as I said, this applies to all sorts of tags, all through different objects and behaviors. Uh, so that should be a big help for when you're using tags anywhere in Construct. Okay, moving on again, um, we've had some updates to the uh, video plugin uh, to support more codecs. So previously, if, you, if you've used the video plugin, you may have noticed that the sources were uh, a WebM source and a H.264 source and it would use the WebM video if uh, available and supported, otherwise it would fall back to H.264. We've now updated this to be more general and support more codecs, so now rather than that system, there's the primary source uh, and format that you set for the video, and it will use that one if supported and available, otherwise it will fall back to the secondary source, which uh, can be in a different format. Now, if you expand these uh, format fields, you can see that there's now lots of more codec options. For example, uh, you can now choose to use WebM AV1, uh, AV1 being a modern, highly uh, effective, good compression, good quality codec, uh, which is also fully open. Um, so that's a very exciting new video format that you can make use of uh, and is now supported uh, with the video plugin. Uh, so now you can, for example, you could choose to use a uh, efficient AV1 uh, video if uh, available or fall back to H.264 if not supported uh, or vice versa. Uh, so that um, gives you more codec options and more flexibility in how you choose your primary and secondary source for the video plugin. Um, these should automatically uh, update according to uh, 
existing projects so that if you've previously used the WebM source and the H.264 source, these should update automatically and carry on working as it did before. Moving on, we have some more updates around how event variables are handled in Construct. This, that includes uh, global variables, local variables, and function parameters. Um, so I've just got a, a dummy event sheet here with some sample variables to demonstrate this. Um, first of all, uh, in the past, we've had an action to reset all the global variables in the entire project. And there's now an action to reset an individual global variable in the project. So for example, if you wanted to only reset this lives global variable here to its initial value, then you can choose it and uh, choose to only reset that global variable. You may have just noticed there that this drop down where you could, can choose your uh, event variables uh, is now all arranged by scope. So you can now see that this is grouped by variables in the handle input function, uh, then in the uh, input events group, and then the global variables at the bottom. So this again, as you can see, we've been making some changes for larger projects to better organize things. Uh, so this means if you have loads of variables, then it should be a lot easier to pick out the one that you want from the list. While I'm here, I'll just quickly show one more addition we've made to how exporting uh, images works. So previously, you may have noticed we've added support for WebP images, which are basically uh, like PNG, but more efficient. So there's uh, no particular reason not to use them. That's why they're the new default. Uh, but in the uh, lossy formats, there's now the option to choose AVIF or AVIF. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, um, but it's another modern um, codec which is based on the AV1 video format again um, and it's for still images and it's like JPEG or WebP lossy uh, but even better so even better quality even smaller file sizes so that's another option you can use to uh, help reduce the download size of your project uh, it's supported on iOS 16 and above which should now be widely supported um, just to note that older versions of IS will not support um, AVIF, AVIF images. Um, so um, should be fine for most people, but just a, a note in case you need to support older versions. The last thing I'm gonna show in this video is uh, some updates to our example projects. Um, first of all, we have, for the first time in a long time, two new demo games. Uh, so we have Kitty Catcher, which is a more complete uh, sort of hidden objects game. And we have Grockle Onslaught, which is a tower defense game with uh, several levels. Uh, so these are a bit more fleshed out than the uh, most other examples. They have, um, you know, a title screen, maybe some options and a, a, a finished screen and a couple of levels. Um, so check those out uh, for some more complete examples of what you can do with Construct. Uh, as you can see, I'm on the new filter here. So this, there's another 12 examples in this release, including things like uh, demonstration of using coding for collision methods, an example of HTML layers, some examples involving uh, drawing to a custom canvas using HTML layers, and uh, some others, including some nice animation examples such as uh, this, which demonstrates using timelines and uh, hierarchies. So uh, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Just one more thing to note is that uh, if you've previously used the Ghost Shooter example, we've now updated the art and renamed it to Spellcaster. Uh, the reason we've done this is often it's the first example uh, people use, especially in education. And essentially this is to lower the age rating and make it more appropriate for younger uh, students, younger people. Uh, so if you've previously relied on Ghost Shooter being in Construct, it's still there. It's almost exactly the same. It's just got some new art and that is now called Spellcaster. And we've also updated the um, artwork in other examples and tutorials and uh, guided tours based on Ghost Shooter. It's now all done as Spellcaster with this kind of art. So just a thing to be aware of if you previously used that example. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. Uh, as ever, there's loads more changes. Uh, you can find them in the release notes. And if you want the full details, check the intervening beta release notes, which will all be uh, listed on the releases page. So thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoy using Construct.